The first part of this lecture is going to be problem identification. And that basically entails what makes a UI DOM problem. And almost always there's going to be some kind of design, even if it's just drawn. And there's going to be a component or a component or components. And generally there's going to be some interaction between these components, the UI and the DOM. So how much CSS, HTML, and JavaScript do these front end problems entail? Well, that totally depends. And as an interviewee, you should, or you should always be asking the interviewer what they expect from this problem. Almost always, there's gonna be a JavaScript aspect to these problems, especially with the rise of take home uh, interviews with everything that's happening in our world. JavaScript is always going to be a part of these problems. And like I said earlier, we're going to prefer semantic markup because that is going to be one of the differences between a lower and a higher level position in an interview. And now we get into the meat of this, which is the magic formula. And it's not magic, but it is a formula. And it is going to be what helps us be able to set up all these types of problems and be able to attack them without having to worry about how we're gonna set up these problems. And this is gonna be new to a lot of you and that's totally okay. And we're basically just here to learn. So first, why would we give ourselves a template? And that's because it's easy to repeat. It removes the boilerplate, it reduces errors, and it helps us focus on the meaningful parts of the problem. And that's where we always wanna be spending the majority of our time when solving front end issues. We don't wanna worry about setting up the problem, getting the information that we want. We wanna worry more about how does interacting with this information change the page and how do we render that correctly for our end user? And that's what we mean by focusing on the meaningful part of the problem. So what is in this template? First, there's gonna be an initialization. How do we create components? There's gonna be a state. What is the state of this component? And how is it changing over time? And events, how do we respond to the events in the components? How is it changing the state? And how are we gonna render this on the page? So the first thing that we're gonna to have to learn is defining components. Defining the different things that we're gonna to want to have on the page. And there are a couple ways to define components, and here are two of them. The first way is to use a class, and all of us know what classes are. And basically, you can use a button class dropdown to define your component. The other way to do this is to use a data component. And we're going to basically be using data components throughout this lecture because it is semantically more clear to what we're using. And we don't really want to use classes where we don't need to use classes purely because of worrying about overriding CSS in the future. So we're going to focus on using the data component way of defining our components, but there are multiple ways of doing it and you should use whatever is most comfortable to you. Front end development is not strict in the way that we must do it. There are many different ways to get the same results in front-end development, and no answer is really more right or more wrong than another answer. And that's why having a template makes it easier to solve these problems, because it gets you out of the headache of having to figure out which way and what do I want to do in this type of solution. Rather, it allows us to focus on a way of solution and to attack the problem in that form. So after we create our components, we are going to need a way of accessing these components. And this is the first time we're going to see query selector all. Query selector all is going to be a way for us to select a different components in our HTML and be able to and be able to see what's inside our data component. So document.querySelector all is going to allow us to access this component as a node, and it's gonna allow us to access all the different attributes that are inside this node. And that is one of the reasons why we really like to use query selector all in order to instantiate our, our entire front end. 
So now we get into the meat, which is what it, how are we actually going to instantiate this? And here we're going to show three different ways of instantiation, but we are going to focus on class instantiation up here. And throughout this lecture, I am going to focus on class instantiation. But for this first breakdown, I am going to show the three different ways of instantiation, just so that we get a little bit of understanding of different ways that you can solve this problem. So in class-based instantiation, it would look something like this, where we have a constant component, and that's going to equal a new dropdown node, which is going to go and reference into a class. Then there's function-based instantiation, which looks very normal, where we just have a dropdown function that pulls in the node. And then there's a factory variant, which is utilizes a dropdown.create, and that is basically a dropdown class with a create node, of course. So this question pertains to this slide right here. And the question is, can you comment on using data component equals dropdown versus role equals list box or the equivalent ARIA attributes? You can absolutely use any of those. The, like I said, front end development is about using what's comfortable to you. And if you're very comfortable using roles or using ARIA equivalents, then those are totally viable and allow you to access the same nodes and utilize the same type of data sets that I'm going to be using. Using data component is nice for people who aren't already used to using roles or using ARIA attributes. And that's because it's already utilized by ES6 and Everything inside of the HTML, including like data set, is going to make a little bit more sense. And our typing actually is going to be very consistent. So we're going to use things like data dash component, data dash templates, data dash or data set, which is why we're going to continue using data dash component. However, using things like roles and ARIA equivalents are totally fine. Thank you for that question. All right. So First we'll look at, so we just looked at three different types of instantiations. So this is how you can instantiate. This is how you can actually get your query selector from your, from your DOM. And this is how we're actually going to plan our HTML.